Today I'm doing the first part of a bookcase tour and I'm going to start with this old bookcase that I keep in my study and this is where I store many of my private press books. So beginning here on the top shelf we have a series of books from the Golden Cockerel Press. So on the end here is Topiary by Cecil Stewart. Um, this has fairly quirky colour wood engravings by Peter Barker Mill and it's an ex-library book so this green portfolio case that you see is actually not an original part of the book that was added by the library. Then we have this striking purple volume which is Grimm's of the Tales. Again nice wood engravings this time by Gwenda Morgan and the purple of this binding is fairly prone to fading and so often when one sees copies on the secondary market, this purple spine will have turned largely yellow. So I'm quite happy to have a copy that's kept its original coloration. Next is La Bello Morphe, which is one of the most affordable golden cockerel editions, although I think it's fair to say very far from the most desirable. And then we have um, these three books, which are a copy of Against Women and two copies of In Defense of Women one being the standard edition and the other being the leather bound special edition. And these two books were illustrated again with color engravings by John Petz and they're really nice uh, illustrations, um, which are highlights of those particular editions. Then we have Anna the Runner, again, nice wood engravings this time from Clifford Webb. We have the Pilgrim Fathers, which I haven't read yet, um, but I'm looking forward to doing so. I think that's going to be quite a histor interesting historical insight into the lives of the first pilgrims in America based on um, journal entries from the time. Then we have the Fables of Aesop, good to have um, that classic in a Golden Cockerel edition. We have Gilgamesh, King of Erech. Um, this has wood engravings by Dorothea Braby, of whom I'm normally a big fan, although I'm not that keen on the engravings in this particular edition. Then we have two of the Golden Cockle Press bibliographies. Pertolote uh, is the blue one here and Coccolorum. And those are respectively the second and third of the four bibliographies um, that were issued. They're really an essential reference as a collector. And um, the really nice thing is that they're very liberally illustrated with engravings from the books. And so um, it's a great way to very quickly get a taste of some of the best aspects of the press's output. Next we have the Green Island. Um, I think this is one of the un underappreciated gems of the press's output um, in a number of respects. I really like the two color green and gray binding. Um, it has two color printing, green and black. Um, and again, John Petz, who we saw a moment or two again, is back this time with black wood engravings that have this real density about them, so they're also quite interesting. So I find lots to like about that edition. Next are two books from the so-called Guinea series of contemporary literature that was published in fairly affordable editions at a price of one guinea, all in a uniform binding. So first we have a German Idyll by H.E. Bates, Again, big fan of H.E. Bates's writing, so I was really glad to have that. Um, it has wood engravings by Linton Lamb. And then we have Daisy Matthews and Other Tales by Rhys Davis, and this was illustrated by Agnes Miller Parker. Then we have The Lottery Ticket by V.G. Calderon, and this was illustrated by Dorothea Braby, as I said a few moments ago. Um, I normally like Braby's work and this is an example of a book where I do quite like the engravings. As is the next one in line, Mr. Chambers and Persephone. In fact, this might be my favorite of her work. And also, uh, although it's not gonna win any prizes as great literature, a fairly fun uh, little fantasy story there as well by Christopher Whitfield. Then we have The Serpent's Presence, Woman in Detail um, with interesting pencil illustrations, which is a little bit unusual for a Golden Cockerel Press book. We have The White Llama. Again, this is by V.G. Calderon, 
um, but this time illustrated by Clifford Webb and this is the unlimited edition so it just has this plain cloth binding normally it would have a dust jacket but my copy is missing its dust jacket we have Tenbury letters which is a collection of letters to and from famous historical figures that was found in the library of a school here in England um, we have We Happy Few which is an anthology of writing about England broadly speaking and particularly about the country's military exploits so everything from Churchill to William Shakespeare is in there um, then uh, we leave the Golden Cockle Press for a moment and um, we have the two volumes of Michel de Montaigne's essays um, this is in the translation of John Florio and this edition was published by the Nonsuch Press they're really very handsome books very nicely put together I really love the typesetting in these books but unfortunately Florio's translation is very archaic and so they're not very good reading editions and I definitely suggest a more modern translation. Here we have The Great Gatsby from the Century Press. So this was the first book they issued. It's bound in recycled biker jacket. Um, I really like the printing in this. It's got a sort of modern edge to it. It was printed letterpress. So really a nice offering and the press, Century Press, has just issued its second book and the sun also rises by Ernest Hemingway and I'm looking forward to seeing what else um, they come up with. Um, this next one here isn't private press at all, the next two in fact. Um, here we have Till I End My Song um, which is illustrated with nice wood engravings by Robert Gibbings who also wrote the book. And the interesting thing for me about this book is that this was written in the last stages of Gibbings life um, when he'd moved to Long Whittenham, which isn't very far from where I live actually and so this book also has some local interest um, that was published by Dent um, then we have The Open Air by Richard Jeffries which is an anthology from this famous um, nature writer that was published by Chatter and Windus and although it's essentially a trade book this was some special edition which was printed um, on handmade paper so leaving Richard Jeffries behind, next we have another book from the Golden Cockle Press, Glory of Life by Llewellyn Powys, um, illustrated again with wood engravings by Robert Gibbings. And this is a real favourite in my collection for me. Big fan of Gibbings engravings, beautifully produced book, really nice paper, two colour printing, lots to like about that particular edition and I think there's a good reason why it commands a bit of a price premium. Then we have a miscellany of type published by the Whittington Press. It's going to be the first of a series of Whittington Press books in fact. And um, this is a real treat because not only does it have beautifully printed samples of um, the collection of monotype type from the Whittington Press um, laid out in a variety of sizes but it also presents that text in the format of excerpts from various books from the press's oeuvre as well as wood engravings from those at books too. So it's really a nice presentation of the press's work over the first decade or two of its existence. Next we have um, St Bartholomew's Whittington, a Cotswold church which was published by the Lone Oak Press operated by Abigail Rura, um, although it was actually printed um, and produced in Whittington by Pat Randall at Nomad Letter Press. We have another Whittington Press book, Diary of an Apple Tree by Miriam McGregor. So it's the first of a few McGregor books. As the name implies, this looks at an apple tree over the course of a year through a series of engravings by McGregor. Uh, this is one of the special editions, so you can see here it has a separate portfolio of prints of the engravings. Then we have another book by McGregor, Midwinter, um, which depicts the Cotswolds around Whittington in a period of snowfall. Then we have 
Whittington aspects of a Cotswold village, again by McGregor, and this is essentially a portrait of the village um, where the press is based and where, in fact, McGregor lived um, for many years. Then we have a Lakeland diary. Um, this was published actually by the Fleece Press, although again printed at the Whittington Press. It's a collection of Guardian columns about life in and around um, the Lake District here in England. Then we have a house in the country, which is from Midnight Paper Sales, the press operated by um, Gaylord Shanilak. So this has four really nice examples of Shanilak's colour wood engravings. Um, he got his reputation for a reason, that's superb work. But also um, I really enjoyed just reading this simple anecdote of life renovating a dilapidated farmhouse out in rural America. Then we have um, The Phoenix from the Whittington Press by Brian Hamscombe. You can see here on the spine it has this Japanese style binding and really nice etchings by Hanscom, superbly printed on really nice paper. So that makes for a nice addition here. Not a big fan of, uh, of reading verse, but at least the etchings themselves are extremely nice. We have The English Scene by John O'Connor, um, his last work signed by O'Connor on his deathbed, but a really beautifully produced book here. Um, this is again the special edition. It's half bound in the most luxurious red leather. And you can see here again, we have a separate portfolio of prints. Then we have Venice, another jewel in my collection, I guess. Um, this again is um, the B edition, uh, special edition. So it's half bound in Oasis goatskin leather and with this really nice orange color, beautifully supple leather. And again, with a portfolio of engravings, which is a real treat because John Craig, who uh, produced the engravings for this book, um, is a real master of the art. Here we have another John Craig book, Britain's Old Burg. It's a slightly esoteric topic, so sleepy seaside town in eastern England, famous for its connection to an old composer, but Craig's wood engravings really bring this to life. Get another superb edition, another real favourite among my collection. Then we have 2020 Vision from Nomad Letter Press, which brings together the work of 19 wood engravers and the artists who inspired them and um, superbly printed as you would expect of anything coming out of Whittington. So really nice to have the work in that format. Then we have the second Whittington Press bibliography, which covers the period from 1982 to 1993. And just like the Golden Cockrell bibliographies we saw um, earlier, this is not merely a list of books, but it's also richly presented with engravings and tipped in specimens of paper and who knows what else. Um, so really a nice book. I haven't spent much time absorbing it yet, but very much looking forward to doing so. So now down to the bottom shelf. Um, here we have a few slightly larger format Golden Cockle Press books. So we have here The Amazons by Ivor Bennett. Again, really nice wood engravings by Clifford Webb, who we've encountered a couple of times already. A Voyage Around the World um, by Anders Sparman. Uh, a Voyage Around the World with Captain James Cook, I should say. Um, this is another favourite among my collection of golden cockerels, in large part because of the really nice wood engravings by Peter Barker Mill, and which have a real modernist edge, very um, forward thinking for the artist on this occasion. But also I think it was quite visionary of the press to publish in a new translation these journals of Anders Sparman from that historically important voyage. And it makes for really fascinating reading if you're at all interested in the age of discovery. Then we have the two volumes of Napoleon's memoirs. I have to say this was one book which I did not finish. I found Napoleon's uh, accounts of his military campaigns to be a little bit mechanical, not terribly exciting, although I should say nicely produced books, a nice addition to handle but not the nicest to read. 
Then we have Bly's Voyage in the Resource. It's a part of the Press's Bounty series of books about the mutiny on HMS Bounty. And this has this um, sailcloth style binding that the press pioneered, um, which is quite a nice design. Again, nicely produced book, although being a mechanical ship's log, uh, I'm not sure how interesting that's going to be to actually read. I haven't gotten around to taking a close look at it yet. Then we move over here and we have the last few books. So here is the Folio Society's facsimile of the Book of Jonah, which was originally published by the Golden Cockrell Press and as you can see was illustrated with wood engravings by David Jones, who again was perceived as being ahead of his time with the art form. Um, and so it's quite interesting to have that. One thing I like about this is that being a facsimile, of course, it's brand new and it has a brand new, completely immaculate facsimile of the disc jacket, for example. And it's sort of fun to have a sense of what those Golden Cockrell Press books might have been like when they were new. Also, it came in quite a nice Solander box, which was a bit of a treat, especially since it wasn't the most expensive of limited editions. Then we have two books of poetry, um, A School for Life from um, previous Parrot Press and Night Thoughts and other poems from Inky Parrot Press. Then we have Weeds and Wildflowers um, from the Two Horse Press, um, although it was essentially produced by the Rampant Lie Press. This made the Grolier Club's list of top 100 books from the first century of its existence. So in some sense, it's private press royalty. Um, it's indeed a beautifully produced book, thanks in large part to the fantastic wood engravings by George Mackley, who is really a master of the art form. Now we have another uh, example of Brian Hanscom's work published by the Whittington Press. And this is Cornwall, an interior vision. And just like the Phoenix that we saw earlier, this has beautifully, beautifully printed um, etchings uh, by Brian Hanscom on really fantastic paper in this Japanese style binding. Really a superbly produced book. Um, and again, it's the special edition. So you can see here we have a separate portfolio, which is great because I can't get enough of the quality of printing. Um, on those those etchings. Here we have another book by Nomad Letterpress. Um, this is Coastline by Hannah Cousins. Um, so this was quite a fun book because it combines the fine printing um, that one associates with Whittington with um, some really fun modern lino cut illustrations by Hannah Cousins who was documenting her journey down the Pacific Coast Highway in California. Speaking of traditional private press, here we have The Defense of Gracchus Babouf by the Gehina Press. Um, this is nice because it has really great etchings, again, portraits of major figures from the French Revolution. Um, they were made by Thomas Cornell. And another nice thing about this book is that I bought it from Cornell's widow and it had basically been in stock all of these years since 1964 and is essentially in new condition. And then last here we have two books that are not private press, they're trade books published by Victor Gollantz, um, but they're first editions uh, of work by H.E. Bates, who, as I've said, I like very much, and those are Through the Woods and Down the River. So an account of life in the English woodland throughout the year, and then a similar account tracing the path of a river um, from its source to its mouth. Um, these are illustrated by superb wood engravings by Agnes Miller Parker. So a tremendous pairing of excellent wood engravings by a master or mistress of the art with great nature writing likewise by a master, H.E. Bates. So although they're not the pinnacle of fine book craft, um, these are two of my favourite books and I'm very proud to keep them here um, in this bookcase with all of those nice private press books. So that completes this part of the bookcase tour. In the next part I'll be looking at where my Folio Society and Limited Editions Club books are shelved. <laughs>